getting back around the guys again for the first time in a few months? Um, yeah, I mean, we've only been here a few days together as a full group, but um, it seems like, you know, the atmosphere in here is pretty good. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of new faces, um, a lot of good additions that we made this offseason. Um, our lineup's a lot deeper, which, you know, very excited about. And um, I think everyone's just excited to get things going. Um, I think, you know, things didn't end the way we wanted to last year, and it's pretty frustrating. So um, just getting that opportunity to get going and, you know, make things right. We saw a lot of videos of you in the offseason. What's the most impactful thing you think you did to improve your game? Uh, probably the, the swing aspect, um, just cleaning a lot of things up, spent, spent a good bit of time over at driveline and, um, you know, they, they've got a lot of technology, a lot of smart guys over there to, to help and, um, you know, very excited to kind of put that into, into the game. Ty, what was that experience like for you working in that manner? Uh, it was really cool. Um, you know, there's, it's crazy to see how, how bad my swing was, like, like on like a mechanical aspect um so to get all that, that that stuff cleaned up and um you know it's still not not perfect there's still you know i have created a lot of a lot of years of bad habits so um just trying to get get as clean as possible and um you know, tighten all that up and you know throughout the the full the full off season i think we made a lot of adjustments and a lot of improvements what did they feel like the bad habits were uh, I was just very handsy. Um, I was I was hitting primarily with just my hands. I wasn't using the rest of my body properly. Um, so just trying to get all the sequencing together, and um, you know, trying to get get my body to you know fire in the right order, um, so I can create as much much power and strength and um, keep my bat in the zone as long as possible. It looks like you kind of have a new setup in the box too. Is that kind of reflective of the changes? That yeah, it's part of it. It just seems like there's it's, you're a little more still. You're not moving. Around. Yeah, that's not something I necessarily tried to do. Um, I think just kind of cleaning up everything else, that just kind of happened. Was there a moment, like JP said, there was a moment where like he, they were preaching, they were preaching, they were preaching, wasn't working, and then one day he hit a ball, and it was just like, okay, this is how I want it to feel. Did you have that moment? Uh, no, I wouldn't necessarily say it's one ball that I hit. Um, we spent a lot of time, um, the first time I went up there, just trying to, to clean clean as much up as possible and um they were very good about just sitting me down and showing me all right this is this is how you were before this is what you need to look like um and so just trying to piece all that together i wouldn't it wouldn't necessarily say it was one swing it was you know the entire off season worth of swings all the motion capture stuff that they have like was it did you understand everything like when they were breaking it down they have all the video and all this mm -hmm. I think the swing mechanics of it all being efficient did you understand it there all there's a lot a lot that goes into it um I wouldn't necessarily say I understood all of it but majority of it um and they were very good about explaining the stuff that I didn't understand Ty, after going through all that do you hear Tony Gwynn in, in the background after all the things that uh, you worked with Tony years ago while you were in college talking to him about hitting and made you a good hitter um kind of sort of um uh, he was just so good at, at hitting and um, it was very, very simple. And now there's there's a lot more, I guess, science that goes in, into hitting that you just didn't never really thought about. I'm sure, you know, it was part of it back then, just not as advanced. But, um, you know, I, he he was just so good at it. He, he, he didn't have, a, you know, all these different cues and keys that he needed. He just got his foot down and swung. So, um but there, there's aspects of, of this swing that I still, you know, that he taught that I want to keep. So. And all off, hard off the top of the lawn, so mm -hmm. that's still in the same. Yeah, yeah. And incorporating all this stuff, the legs, the sequencing, what do you, what should the results be? Or what should, is it just the bat in the zone? I mean, from a baseball standpoint, is it less swing and miss? Is it harder to rate center? What, is, what, do, what should happen if you do it right? Uh, well, I mean, if you do it right, you should. I mean, hit the ball hard. I mean, that was one of the big things we worked on was not only just the sequencing stuff, but um, you know, adding uh, bat speed. Um, I added probably close to three and a half miles an hour bat speed throughout the throughout the off season. So um, that was another important thing that we wanted to to do. And um, most of it was just by cleaning up my mechanics. I was able to add more bat speed. So um, you know, if, if everything is done correctly, the swing swing is done properly. 
my my barrel's in the uh, the zone a lot longer, and you know, I should it just gives me more room for air. Hitting has come so natural to you for your whole life, but when did you realize that maybe you need to do adjust things to go to a place like driveline to you know kind of potentially propel your career? Um, I, I think for me, you know, I've kind of like you mentioned, I've I've just always hit my whole life, and I've I've gotten away with, um, you know, not having someone in the off season to help guide me or coach me. Um, I, I obviously am in touch with JD and uh, Tony throughout the off season. Um, now we have Brownie over here, but um, I've always kind of just done things on my own. And, um, you know, obviously last year didn't go the way I wanted. So um, I thought it was time to kind of try something new and um, saw you know, how successful JP was and how, how good driveline worked for him. So um, I figured if I'm going to start somewhere, I might as well start there. Are there any other changes to what you normally do in an off season? Um, eh, not not too much. No, I mean, spend a lot of time, you know, trying to get my body where it needs to be, um, and you know, in the weight room. But for the most part, that I, I try and do that every off season. So um, this off season's main focus was just trying to get the swing right. Ty, did you know you'd be on the internet here underwear? <laughs> no. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, so they, I mean, I didn't, I don't have Twitter and all that, and so I don't follow, you know, what they do or what they post or anything, and um, yeah, it was, uh, they asked me if they could film me, um, and I figured I was already, like, taped up with all the sensors and stuff on, I thought it was for, like, research purposes, and the next day I was driving, <laughs> I was driving to Driveline, and my wife called me, and um, told me I was in my underwear on the internet, so, <laughs> uh, so that, that was that wasn't supposed to happen. But. I mean, like, they, I mean, you look at the, the posts and guys like George and all these guys and, are liking it. And did you hear from your teammates when you were doing that? Like, hey, uh, yeah, I got a few text messages. <laughs> but, but I mean, at the same time, they understand what you're doing. They got to oh, mock yeah, you yeah, because yeah. you mock them all the time. Yeah, you know. I mean, if you dish it, you got to take it, right? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Todd, talking to a lot of the players here, they. They seem, you know, obviously disappointed with the way things ended last year. It's kind of driven them this year. Is that kind of how you guys feel here? That you were so close that that you need to just put in a little bit more to get to get over that hump and and win the division. Yeah, I mean, I I think uh, you know, like I kind of mentioned earlier, we were I, I, uh, one upset but two confused. We weren't we weren't sure what to do after the last game because we the whole year we preached playoffs. We were going to go to the playoffs and then we didn't get there and we were like, okay. What do we do now? I guess we just go home. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I think that definitely motivated us and kind of you know lit a fire under us. And you know we're talking to a lot of the returning guys. Um, you know they're definitely excited to get things going again. Did you watch the postseason at all? I mean I don't know like if you're a you know a baseball guy that watches mm -hmm. a bunch of games. Did you watch it? Because like talking with like Julio, he said it was frustrating, but also showed like how close you were. It was the Astros and the Rangers mm -hmm. right there. And then you, Year. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy watching baseball, so I, I watch the games, and um, you know, yeah, it's it's crazy to think about. You know, the last two years, both both uh, you know World Series champs have come out of the AL West, so and we were right there both years. So um, yeah, it's uh, you know it's pretty frustrating. Ty, what do you see when you look around that clubhouse as far as talking about what you were just talking? guys that were at it. It was kind of an interesting off season. Mm -hmm. But it seems when you talk to a lot of people in here it makes a lot of sense in what you guys need to do. Yeah. Um just kinda like looking around and you know, like I said, I've only been here a couple of days with, with a full squad, so um you know, I haven't had a chance to dive into too many conversations with guys yet, but um guys just kinda look more focused. They look uh you know like they have a little more intent this year and um the pieces that we added, um, they, they, they seem like great guys. Polanco is my, my locker buddy here, so I've had some conversations with him. And, um, you know, he's definitely excited to be over here. And um, I think everyone's just ready to get things going. Was it like Hager even left? I mean, it just seemed no, it was weird. I forgot that he was gone. Um, yeah, no, it's it's great having him back. And, um, you know, he's such a such a leader in, in the clubhouse. And um, I know he's definitely excited to be back. So um, it's another another good piece we added. So we talked to Skip that winter meetings and he had said that like he'd made a point he wanted to talk to you kind of about what was going on you know Gino gets traded Jerry gets traded all the stuff that was going on 
We want to talk to you, JP, and some of those guys. What, what did that mean to you that the managers like including you in some of the front office decisions, you know, the, the group of leaders? What did that mean to you and tell you about your place on the team? Uh, it means a lot. Um, you know, um, he didn't have to do that. So for the open communication like that and um, kind of just letting, letting us know, you know, kind of the route they're going and um, the moves that they're making, um, it kind of helped, you know, I guess uh, clear up any questions that I I would have had. Um, you know, he he the first time I came out to drive line, he was there, and that's where where we were able to sit down and talk for a little bit. Um, but yeah, no, it, it meant a lot that he you know went out of his way. And, uh, is it hard to hear it first? I mean, like Gino was a, a real popular guy mm -hmm. in the clubhouse. You know, Jared, and, like you loved to make fun of Jared, so like it was like was it tough to hear like guys that you played with and reasons why. Yeah, I mean, losing guys like like that um you know like you said Gino was a, a staple in this locker room so um to lose someone like that um you know it's it's not easy but at the same time I'm I'm at a point in my career where I understand you know it's games of business and it is kind of it is what it is um kind of everything's out of your control um in that that aspect as the as far as the front office stuff and um you know as much as much as Gino is going to be missed um you know we added a lot of good pieces and Definitely, you know, excited to have those guys here. I was gonna say, like, you, I know you know Garber a little bit from playing against him, and then Blanco. The, the guys they had. I mean, you look at your lineup. It does you mentioned deeper, but it does seem like it has the potential to be more consistent mm -hmm. throughout. Yeah, yeah, I think they they were kind of, you know, they the front office had a goal in mind of you know eliminating strikeouts, and they went and got guys that don't strike out. So, um, you know, they 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 added the right guys, I think, and. Um, you know, we're just going to have to see see how the season unfolds. Thanks, man. Mm-hmm.